For me, success is definitely personal. I want to see what I'm capable of doing. There's a lot of things I have yet to accomplish. One of the things about running is we're never fully satisfied. We accomplish one goal and we move right on to the next one because we see what's possible. That's what I want to do. I want to see what's possible. Hey there. Well, today I did my first track session in like three months, I think. And it's funny because usually I don't actually love the track that much, but since I hadn't been on the track for so long, I actually kind of missed it. And so it was really fun to get back on the track and have that pure, raw speed that I remember from high school. And one thing that I also remembered was my drills and this routine that I do prior to speed workouts. And what I found is that when I have this routine, it helps prep my body for the work that I'm going to do. Then I feel better and I enjoy it more. And one thing that's also important is I practice this because it's my routine prior to a race. And so that's kind of what training is, right? Like if we're planning to race, it's important to practice that pre-race routine so that we have it nailed down and we have it all prepared and our body's used to it and we know what we respond to the best and then it sets us up for success in our races. So what I like to do prior to a speed workout and it carries into what I would do prior to a race is that I like to do some activation um so prior to my warm-up i do a couple different activation exercises kind of getting my body awake and ready to go because a lot of my races are early in the morning a lot of my runs are early in the morning and so i'm practicing that uh, ability to get my body activated ready fi my muscles firing and just that overall like um, awareness that comes with, hey, you got to work today, body, let's do this. And so I do my activation um, through dynamic movements, warm up, etc. And the one thing to note is that I'm planning to share all of these on this channel. So pay attention. I will be um, uploading those soon where I will be doing a pre-run activation, a post warm up drill session, and then a post run recovery stretch. So those three things are very important and something that I like to practice consistently um, so that I feel like I am best preparing my body and best giving my body the opportunity to have a good day. Um, so I talk to my clients about this a lot whenever we're talking about running and racing and workouts and everything is this concept of setting yourself up to succeed because that's what you want to do. And when you get to know yourself as an athlete and as a coach, when I get to know an athlete, it's really helpful to learn what each person needs to be mentally and physically prepared for that day and for whatever is on the docket, whether it's an easy run or a hard workout, um, speed or tempo or a long run uh, or a race. And so how do we best prepare our bodies and our minds to be ready to go, right? So like I mentioned, I do this pre-run activation and then I would do my warm up. And I warmed up um, three miles today. And for me, that's about a standard. Um, when I was in high school, I would do 10 minutes. And it seems like as I get older, I have to add more and more time uh, to feel more warmed up and ready to go. And so that's just something that I built into my routine and that I know I need. And then I did some strides and kind of got my body awake and ready to roll. 
And then I did these drills. And so I did my activation to start and then I did the warm up, and then I did strides and then I did drills. And the drills are kind of this like, get that bounce and that pop that I'm looking for so that when I start my first speed interval, my body's already ready to go for that type of speed. And this is one really important thing that I've learned because it can really prevent injury. You hear so many times like so-and-so pulled a hamstring because they jumped right into their speed workout and they didn't do their drills. And so this is one way that I have found to be so helpful. And think about it like a sprinter. Like if you've ever watched a sprinter warm up, you know, look at Usain Bolt, like his races are, you know, less than 10 seconds long, but he does an hour, an hour and a half warm up prior to that to get his body firing and ready to go. And so I've been to the track when I've seen pro sprinters working out as well. And the amount of drills and power exercises that they are doing prior to a speed workout is incredible to me. Personally, I do like maybe five minutes worth of drills. Um, and that's just because I'm not asking as much out of myself. I'm not trying to hit that top end speed off the bat. And so for you, you have to figure out what makes the most sense for you. And this is another activity that I plan to create a video and upload for you so that you can watch and learn about drills. And again, drills are usually best done after a little bit of a running warm up so that your muscles are loose, ready to go, and then you activate things with these drills and you really get the body prepped to handle what's next. So typically that's how I would do um, my preparation for a race as well, as I would do my activation and then I would do my warm up, and then I would do my drills and then I would um, get ready to go. So I highly suggest that you figure out some sort of routine for you because I know for me personally, leading into a race, having that routine established already and knowing what my body needs to perform well, gives me such a sense of confidence and a sense of calm leading into that start line. And this is one way that I've significantly been able to reduce my pre-race anxiety is by having this routine established and set up and knowing exactly what to expect going into um, my warm-up routine and that cycle, the, that hour, hour and a half prior to my event. Um, another thing is in training, and this is, you know, something that I have found to be super helpful, and it might be super helpful to you too, is following a run when I get home, instead of just walking right to my door and starting my day, I try to give myself just a couple minutes to stretch. And I think about, you know, what might be feeling a little bit tight? What are some of my traditional problem areas? And so for me, that's often my calves. And so I stop and I'll stretch out my calves on the step uh, outside my house prior to walking in. And sometimes I'll do a couple leg swings. Sometimes I'll do a few lunges or some squats. Sometimes I'll do a couple push-ups. Um, sometimes I'll stretch out my hip flexor or my hamstrings or my quads, whatever kind of felt tight that day. And I give myself just like two or three minutes of awareness of what needs to be worked out, um, following that run so that I can kind of end, have a few conscious moments of what areas are needing to be addressed right now. And then I'm able to address them and then I move on with my day. And so maybe perhaps later on, I'll be like, ah, you know, my, my hamstrings and my IT bands were a little bit tight or my quads were tight or whatever. And then maybe I'll film roll for 10 minutes or whatnot um, sometime midday. And that allows me to be really self-aware as to how my body is responding to training, what it needs, and some of the areas that I need to pay a little bit extra attention to so that I can be ready to go for tomorrow's run. So one thing to note is that sometimes these things don't always go according to plan. I have had races where I have barely made it to the start line in time and I didn't have time to do my traditional routine or anything like that. 
and that's okay. Um, you know, adrenaline is amazing and oftentimes <laughs> you'll be just fine, but it can be really helpful to have established this routine so that you do have something kind of set up and in place and ready to go. I remember in 2016 when I was preparing for the New York City Marathon, I did kind of this trial run where I ran a, mar a half marathon on Staten Island and I took the ferry over and the ferry was delayed and we got in and then there were tons of people and I couldn't figure out how to get to the start line and then I ended up only getting in a 12 minute warm up, no drills, no strides, nothing. I was tying my shoes when they were doing the national anthem. I had like zero extra time and I remember thinking, okay, like I just have to stay calm. I have to recognize that maybe my first couple miles are gonna be more of a warm up than what they typically would be in a race scenario when I had my traditional warm up with my drills and my strides. And then I'm feeling amazing and I had a great race that day. So it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It just means that it's helpful to have a routine set up and to have something in place. Um, but to also recognize that, hey, stuff happens and sometimes you have to go with the flow. So hopefully this is helpful to you and it's something that you can kind of work to put in place so that you can figure out what are the things that you need before your warm up, uh, during your warm up, after your warm up, before your workout or race, and then prior um, to that as well. And so I hope that, you know, maybe something is beneficial here for you and that you can find a takeaway that you can put into this routine so that you can have um, just feel more prepared and feel more at ease and ready to go um, because you have that confidence that your body is set and prepped to uh, meet the needs that you want it to do on that day. So let's get after it this week um, and let's focus on the success that we can have in our runs in our races, and in our recovery. Cheers, and I'll see you next week. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, and comment. I love to hear your feedback, and I love to hear what else you would love to hear about. That is very important to me, and all of the things that I talk about are recommendations from my awesome fans like you. I also am on all channels at Neely S. Gracie, so feel free to follow me there, and hopefully I can provide some more content for you that will be beneficial, and I look forward to continuing our conversations. Thanks again, and you guys are awesome. Have a good week.